The SL in Mercedes SL is supposed to mean sport lightweight, which the car hasn't been since the last time Nixon had a bright future. But with this, the sixth generation, it's come back somewhat to those roots and watered them generously with advanced technology. Let's drive the 2013 SL 550 and check that tech. Three inches longer, two inches wider, and with more massive lines and a macho face than the 2012 model, this is, to my eye, not so much a pretty car as an impressive one. Maybe it's the Mars red color, but this year's SL got more looks than any previous year I can recall exposing the public to. Now, for 2013, Mercedes has kind of revised the cabin of the SL. It's got a lot of this throwback stuff with these big round nozzles around the vehicle. But the key is always the same here in the center stack, and that is the Mercedes command system, which today is looking like kind of a small screen. It's kind of the iPhone of its class. Navigation has always been really well rendered by Mercedes. You can also go full screen, which helps a lot with this relatively diminutive display. At that sort of setting, it's actually not bad. And bless their little German hearts for not making me jump through hoops to navigate the map the way BMW does. Just grab the controller, kick it around the direction you want to go for flyovers. Now for media, you have a lot of things to choose from. AM and FM radio with HD radio, of course, satellite radio, six CD changer right here in the dash. Memory card means SD card right here. You're not going to use that. Music register is a hard drive. You have 10 gigabytes of the 80 gigabyte navigation drive available to rip media to. USB storage is here in the console. I've got a stick in there now. The media interface is this proprietary cable, which in this configuration has an Apple connector as well as a female aux pigtail right above the USB. Seems like they can make that a little simpler, to be honest. And of course, Bluetooth audio for streaming, and I showed you the aux. We also have Bluetooth hands-free calling, of course, phone book download and all the bells and whistles around that. Now on the output side, very interesting. This car comes based with a 5.1 surround Harman Kardon Logic 7 surround system. And the subs are fascinating. There are two subs built into the frame of the car right about the firewall. They're somewhere just past the floor mats there. And the base in this car really is remarkable, which is quite a trick in an open car. Now if you roll across this ribbon further, there's your phone technology. You can play DVDs. That's what's under video. That's only when you're parked, obviously. But look at the little globe icon. When you press that, you get outrageously a sign-in form. You have to do a form literally with your name, address, and email address so Google will let you move forward to use some apps. You have Google local search, silly news headlines you'll have already read on some other better device. Here's Yelp restaurant reviews. That's interesting. Downloading POIs and routes from outside the car. Facebook, that scares me. The Google local search is interesting because it lets you both enter an address, obviously, and then navigate to it. But most importantly, it also gives you street view and you can pan around. But notice, we don't have the Google Earth view for navigation the way you know who does. I'm talking about Audi. Note the great irony. None of this works while you're moving. It's a car, not a tablet. And even if it was one, it'd be a damn small one. Now related to this, but different, is the Embrace app you can put on your smartphone that lets you have a relationship between the phone and the car. Locate the car, lock and unlock the doors. Not nearly as sexy as this, but possibly a lot more useful. San Francisco. We're starting to get to the era where voice command is getting more natural in vehicles. In other words, a little closer to what your phone does for one one thousandth the price. Do you want to enter a house number or do you want to start route guidance? House number. Please say the house number. 235. House number 235. Accepted. Do you want to start route guidance? Yes. Starting route guidance. And you'll also notice it was very quick on the uptake to process what I said. This is a really good voice command system. Now the seats in an SL have always been a wonder of engineering. We have the active seats in this car, so as you corner, the bolsters kind of do this to hold you in place. It's kind of spooky. I find it kind of annoying, but a lot of folks love it. Lots of comfort controls. Here are three levels of heat on this button, three levels of ventilation. Back here is the air scarf button. That's this guy right over here. This is a heater. It really works well, even though you've got all this airflow coming over the top of the car, it doesn't come down here and steal the warm air. Wonderful engineering. Oh, and this is kind of dirty. You got massage seats with one, two, three, four levels of whatever it is they do, from slow and gentle to fast and vigorous. I don't think children should ride in this car.
Now you've never seen a glass roof like this before. Normally you've got a shade you pull back and forth to make the sun go away if you're getting cooked. On this one, you hit the magic sky control button right here on the roof console and look what happens. It lightens up electrochromically. That's pretty cool. In fact, it's also cool that we have a retractable with a big glass panel. That's also amazing, especially since this is, I believe, the fastest convertible top in the world, for a retractable at least. Look at this thing, it's a miracle of engineering. It does settle back in as it does this multi-panel clamshell thing to take up a fair amount of your trunk space, but look how quick that was. That was 16 seconds. Oh, notice what's missing here. No ugly windshield washer nozzles. Instead, there are laser drilled spray nozzles in the windshield wiper assembly, so the stuff actually ends up on the glass and not mostly over your roof on the car behind you. Now, under the engine bay comes a bit of interpretation. This may be an SL550, but it's not a 5.5 liter engine or a 5 liter engine. With today's modern technology, you get plenty of power out of a 4.6 liter V8. It has direct injection. You can hear that. Multi-spark. It fires a spark plug several times per combustion cycle. Both of these intakes are force-fed by their own turbocharger, one per bank. All this adds up to an engine that does 429 horsepower. Impressive, but the torque is the real key number, 516 foot-pounds. That's a lot for a car that only weighs 4,000 pounds now. It's mostly aluminum construction these days, and that means they shaved some 300 pounds to get it down to two tons on the nose. Zero to 60, about four and a half seconds, and delivering 1624 MPG, no gas guzzler tax. All this power goes out through a one choice only seven speed automatic. Let's go for a ride. Despite shedding, what, 300 pounds since the last year's model, it's still a heavy car that is not a sports car. That zero to 60 in four and a half seconds is impressive, but the power comes on in big globs. In all, the SL550 succeeds and exceeds at what it aims to do, which is to be a personal luxury statement and an exceptionally comfortable car with a sporting veneer to it. Okay, an SL550 is not a cheap car. This thing bases at 106 now. The good news is it's really well equipped. Most of the technology we saw in the cabin is part of the base trim. One you have to add a la carte though is that kind of frustrating Mercedes apps suite. That's $14 a month, an interesting new pricing model for the auto industry for any kind of option. And the one you have to get, $2,500 for the Magic Sky Control glass roof. Yeah, you want that.